Hello, it's Todd again, your logic tutor. <clears throat> We're continuing with our uh, problems on uh, natural deduction using the rules of inference. Okay, uh, let's tackle this problem right here. We need to prove Q, uh, and we have premises 1, 2, and 3. Uh, so the first thing we should do is look for Q. We see a Q on line 1, so our standard procedure is to find the antecedent, since it's a conditional, and do a modus ponens, and we would be done. The thing is, however, I also notice that there's a Q in a consequent on line 3. So the statement I need to get to, Q, I see in the consequent of two different conditionals. And usually, that's a big tip-off of how you're going to solve the problem. And the solution, when you see this, usually involves simple dilemma. Okay, so what that means is you're looking for this. Uh, let's say box or circle, if box, then triangle, if circle, then triangle. So what are you going to get? Either way, you're going to get a triangle. Okay, and our triangle, as it were, in this case, is Q. We saw Q uh, in that place. So the question is, do we have a substitution instance of these three lines? And if we do, we can use simple dilemma to get to our Q. So let's take a look. We have the two conditionals on 1 and 3. Uh, so what we would need is the disjunction of the antecedents. And we have the antecedent B, and we have the antecedent A and C. And look what's right here in line 2. B or A and C. So we have exactly what we need to do the simple dilemma. The problem is with line 2, it says all of that and D. We need to get rid of that D. Well, that's simple enough to do because line 2, the main operator, is a conjunction. So we can simplify to B or A and C. And then we have all, wait, let's write how, where that came from, from line 2 by simplification. So now we have all the parts we need, 1, 3, and 4. Those three parts are all the parts we need for the simple dilemma. So if we do the simple dilemma, we get Q. 1, 3, and 4, simple dilemma. So the key was noticing the, the statement that I was trying to get, Q, appeared in the consequent of two different conditionals. And once I saw that, I was thinking simple dilemma is going to be the answer. Okay, let's try another one. Okay. All right, so we need to prove Q or not Z. We have these three premises. So um, let's think about this. Uh, let's look and see if we have a Q or not Z anywhere. We don't see that, and then my second strategy is to look for the opposite of what I'm trying to prove, so that would be Q or not Z, in the antecedent of some conditional. And I don't see that either. So, because this is a disjunction, a couple of strategies come to mind. First, notice that the first disjunct is a Q, and I see it in a consequent of a conditional. And the second disjunct is not Z, and I see it in the consequent of a conditional. Okay? That leads me to believe that the solution is going to involve CD, constructive dilemma. Okay? And let me explain constructive dilemma for you. Uh, let me get rid of this. Um, a constructive dilemma goes like this. Suppose you have box or circle. Box gets you a triangle, but if you have the circle on the other hand, you get a diamond. So you're either going to get 
the triangle or you're going to get the diamond. Okay, and in our case, uh, we have a Q in the right place and we have a not Z in the right place. So if we can find a disjunction with the uh, the square and the circle, as it were, as the um, disjuncts, then we're good to go to use constructive dilemma and get the Q or not Z. Okay, first things first, uh, line three, we don't have a conditional then Z all by itself. It's got this tag along and Z. Uh, we need to get rid of that, and since it's an and, we can by simplification, then not z. This is line four from three by simplification. Okay, so now we have the two conditionals that we need, two and four. So now we just need um, a, a disjunction that's made out of the antecedents from two and four. We need something that says not b or a and C. Well, if you look around, you can see that that's in line one. However, line one is a conjunction and has this and D business. So we need to get rid of that D before we can do our constructive dilemma. Getting rid of the D is easy enough to do because it's a conjunction we can just simplify. So line five, we get not B or A and C from one simplification. Okay, now we have all the parts that we need, all the corresponding parts to the constructive dilemma. Uh, so we're looking at lines 2, 4, and 5, and from those we're going to get Q or not Z, 2, 4, 5, C, D, and we're done. Okay, let's try another. Okay. Uh, this one, X or Y, look for X or Y together, don't see it. Look for its opposite and an antecedent, don't see that. But by now we are savvy and we notice that the first disjunct is in a consequent of a conditional and the second disjunct is in a, the consequent of a conditional. And so we're thinking CD is going to be the key. So let's get the, uh, the conditionals from 1 and 2 by themselves, which means we need to get rid of uh, these tagalongs, um, which we can do um, by simplification. Because 1 is a conjunction, we can simplify it to A, then X from 1, simplification. And uh, we can do something similar to line 2. We get b then y from 2 by simplification. Uh, so now we just need a disjunction between uh, those antecedents. We need a or b. And if we look at line 3, there it is. It's not all by itself. It's got the a and j. Oh, so we need to get rid of that, which we can do by simplification again. So we have A or B from 3 by simplification. And now 4, 5, and 6 get us 7. They get us X or Y. 4, 5, 6 um, by CD. Yeah, I skipped a line, but that's okay. <laughs>